I am a 26 year old female. Earlier this year, I met up with one of my best friends, Courtney. It was a Friday night and we went to a local village. Next to the center of town, there were some restaurants and there was also a park with live music being played. We had made reservations to the restaurant but got there about an hour early to walk around and enjoy the night. It was very nice weather that evening and lots of other people were out. Courtney and I walked over to the concert and there was a bit of a crowd standing nearby. We hung out there for a while until it was time for our dinner reservations. While we were over there, I took a picture of Courtney and I and posted it to my Snapchat story. We later went to a nearby restaurant and then walked around the plaza. After we left, we each went home. Now, after arriving back to my apartment, I saw that I had a few Snapchat notifications. One of them in particular caught my eye. A guy who I did not know responded to my story. He responded to the picture of Courtney and I and said, I was behind you guys. I did not have any clue as to who this guy was, and I did not even remember becoming friends with him on Snapchat. I realized that he must have recognized us though and also been at the concert thing. I responded with something like, oh, haha, ha, that's funny. He then said something like, yes, I was watching you the whole time. I was a little bit creeped out by this response, but hoped and assumed that he was just joking. I did not respond. However, the man then sent another message a very short time later. I looked and he asked where I was going next weekend and said that he would watch us then too. I asked the man who he even was. I was wondering why and when I became friends with him on Snapchat. The man did not respond, but left me on red. After that, I blocked him. I then started talking to Courtney and telling her of the situation. Courtney said that the guy had also sent her some Snapchats that same night. She also mentioned how he was being creepy, and she too did not know who he was. After that, she blocked him as well. I remember that for a few days and the next time I saw Courtney, I was a little bit paranoid. Luckily, nothing strange has happened since, except I never saw what the guy looked like and I still don't know. I'm not sure if he was actually at the concert thing and watching us or if he was just saying that on Snapchat. I honestly don't know why. I'm just hoping that I never encounter him again. This happened last year and still creeps me out when I think of it. So I was at home one night by myself. I was just in my bedroom scrolling through my phone. All of a sudden, I saw this Snapchat notification from a name that I did not recognize. I was curious, so I went to Snapchat and opened the snap to see. It was a selfie of what appeared to be a man. However, this photo was taken extremely close to his face and he also appeared to be in a very dark room. I could barely see his face at all and didn't recognize it to be anybody that I knew. The picture honestly looked very creepy. There was no words with the picture and that was it. I guess at some point, I must have become friends with this guy. I didn't know when though. I had Snapchat for probably 10 years. I did not send a picture back, but instead typed a message for the guy asking who he was. Then he sent another photo. When I opened it, I saw that it was much like the one before. It was honestly so creepy, I wish I would have screenshotted it, but I didn't. I thought that maybe the person sent a picture like this by mistake, but after the second one, I realized that it was not. I asked again who it was. The person's response, though, really shocked me. He simply said, I'm coming over now. I thought that he had to be joking, but I also realized then that I had my location on on Snapchat. I quickly went into the settings and turned my location off. If this guy was serious, I was hoping that he would not know where I was. Then I blocked the mysterious guy. I thought that was it. I returned to what I was doing, but I couldn't help but feel a little bit creeped out by the whole thing. Well, roughly 30 minutes later, there was a knock at the front door. I had a terrible feeling instantly. I think by now it was like 10 something at night. Not a normal time for somebody to come to the door. I carefully left my bedroom and went down the hallway. Eventually, I got to a window that I could look out and see who was there. When I did, I saw a man wearing a ski mask standing there. I couldn't believe it. The guy must have got my location before I had turned it off. I watched him knock on the door again. Then he started to look around. When he did, 
I quickly moved back and away from the window. I heard the guy walk off the step, but did not know where he was going to. The next thing I knew, I heard him right outside one of the main windows. I ran back into my bedroom and then called the police. I locked my bedroom door and covered my window. Then I just waited. I did not hear anything during this time. I wasn't sure what was going on, if he was trying to break in or maybe if he left. About 10 minutes later is when the cops arrived. They came to the front door and I told them about what happened. They offered to look around and I almost said that they didn't have to but I ended up saying sure. Then they looked around my backyard and surprisingly found the man hiding in some bushes. When they located him, they asked him to come out. He ignored them and then tried to run. However, the police caught up with him before he left the yard. It was the same guy who had been Snapchatting me. I'm not sure what his plans were. I'm just glad that he was caught. For some background to the story, I'm a female and was 17 at the time. I was a senior in high school and lived with my parents. I have Snapchat and have had it since middle school actually. It was a very common way for me to talk to friends in high school. Occasionally I would get added by random people who I didn't know. I would say it happened about every once every week or two. However, I never added anybody back unless I knew exactly who they were. I added some random people back when I was much younger and some of them were kind of weird so I stopped doing that. Well, I remember one day, I got added by some random guy on Snapchat. I did not add him back and deleted it. So I think it was the next day or else a couple days later, I got added by one of my friends from school. It was not one of my best friends, but somebody who I knew decently. I already was friends with her on Snapchat, so when I saw it, I figured that she made a new account. In high school, it was not that uncommon for people to make new accounts for various reasons. I didn't think too much of it, and I added her back. That afternoon, after I arrived home from school, I was just in my bedroom at my desk, and that same friend messaged me on Snapchat. She asked me what I was doing, and I said that I was just at home doing homework. She then told me that she was going to come over. I said okay, but it seemed a little bit odd. She had maybe come over like once or twice, but it had been a really long time. I also hadn't really hung out with her in a while. During this time, my parents were still gone at work, and I was at home by myself. About 15 minutes later, there was a knock at the front door. I assumed it to be my friend, and I was still a little bit confused that she was coming over at all. But she also did not text me on Snapchat to say that she was there or anything. So I left my bedroom, and I walked out into the living room. I soon saw that there was a random man standing on the front step. I had no idea who he was or what he was doing at my house. I decided not to answer the door. Luckily, he did not see me when I looked out of the window. I then went back to my bedroom. When I did, I saw that my friend had now messaged me on Snapchat. She told me that she was outside and asked to be let in. Now I knew what was going on. This was not my friend at all, but this man must have been pretending to be her. I instantly blocked the account. I then went back out into the living room and saw that the man was still standing there. I wasn't sure what I was going to do about it, but that's when I noticed my dad's car going down the street. He was coming back home from work. As soon as he started to pull into the driveway, the man at the front step just took off running. He left the front yard going back out into the street. My dad came inside and mentioned how he saw a guy running from our yard. I told him what happened and he called the cops. We talked to them when they came out and they said that they would look into it. That man must have known my friend's name if he pretended to be her. How he even knew who I was, I do not know. My best guess is that he saw me on Facebook or Instagram or something, or maybe even in person. He must have looked at my friends list on probably Facebook to get her name and then impersonate her on Snapchat. It was crazy, but luckily I never heard from him or saw him again. This is something that took place back when I was in high school. I was a sophomore at the time, and I should mention that I have an older brother, but he was already in college at the time of this story. Every day, I would ride the bus home from school. It would stop at the end of my street, and then I would walk the rest of the way home and be back by about 2.45 p.m. 
Our house was about halfway down the street. One day, just like any other, I got off the bus, walked home, entered my house through the front door, and went inside. My parents were not home from work yet, as they rarely were when I got home from school. Sometimes on Fridays they would leave work early, but this day was a Thursday. I would be home alone for usually anywhere from one to three hours. I didn't mind, and would just do whatever I wanted, really. When I got inside, I had some homework to do that day, and I wanted to get it done and out of the way. I remember that I went upstairs to my bedroom to do it. We had a two-story house, and my bedroom was upstairs. Probably like 30 minutes after I got home, I was doing homework when I heard a knock at the front door. I wasn't really sure what it could be. We didn't get people at our front door very often. I got up from my desk and walked downstairs to check the front door. By the time I got down there, I kind of expected whoever had knocked to be gone. They didn't knock twice or anything, but when I arrived to the front door, I saw that there was a man standing there. He looked pretty average. He was wearing what looked like some kind of business uniform and was carrying a briefcase. I unlocked the front door and opened it. The man said hi and I asked him what he wanted. That's when he told me that he was some kind of insurance person. I really don't remember exactly what he said. He spoke kind of fast and the only word I really remembered was insurance. He asked me if I was the homeowner. I told him no and said my parents were not home right now. The guy said sorry to bother me and then bye. I watched him walk back down the driveway and I went back upstairs to my room. When I got up there, I continued doing my homework. There was a window in my bedroom that overlooked the backyard. Maybe about 10 minutes later, something caught my eye out of the window. I walked closer to the window and saw the same insurance guy. He was now in our backyard. That's when I got a bad feeling. There was really no reason why he should be back there. I watched him walk over to where one of our back windows was. I saw the guy look around when he got there almost as if he was trying to make sure that nobody was watching him. When he did, I ducked down below my window. I waited for a few seconds and then looked up again. The man was still there at the window. He set his briefcase down and then opened it. There were what looked like tools inside. He looked inside the back window, putting his hands up to the glass next to his face. Then he went back to his briefcase. He picked something up out of it and then walked over to another window and looked inside that one. After that, he returned to the first window that he had been at. I then watched him take the kind of tool, and I was sure that he was going to try to break in. As I watched the man putting his tool to the window area to do who knows what, I got an idea. My parents clearly weren't home yet, and I had no idea when they would be. So I ran out of my bedroom, down the stairs, but I tried to do it quietly. Then I got to our garage door that led from our pantry to the garage. I opened up the door and then pressed the button to open the front garage door. When I did, I carefully went to the doorway of the dining room and looked to the window where the man was at. I was just in time to see him scrambling away. I watched him run to the opposite side of our house. I then went back to the garage and closed the open garage door. I had hoped to make the man think that my parents had gotten home by opening the garage door, and luckily, it worked. The man ran into our neighbor's backyard, and after that, I lost sight of him, but I think he kept going. I kept a close watch on the backyard, and the man didn't return. When my parents got back, I told them everything. They were impressed with how I handled the situation. After that, the guy never showed up again, though. I'm glad he wasn't able to get into the house. I had been driving for hours on a rural highway close to sunset when suddenly my car broke down. My phone had no signal and I was far out from any town. My car had started sputtering down the road and then it eventually died completely. I was now on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. I tried restarting the engine a few times, but nothing happened. At this point, I was really tired and frustrated. I got out and popped the hood, but I wasn't much of a mechanic, so I didn't really know what to look for. Some smoke was rising from the engine, but that was about it. I had no idea what was wrong. I thought about just walking to the nearest town, but I had no idea how far it was. Just a bit earlier on the road, I had passed by a small road that led into a driveway a few miles back. I hoped there might be a house or some sort of help down that driveway. I grabbed a flashlight from the trunk and started walking. The light from the setting sun quickly faded. I finally arrived at the small drive, and when I got there, I reached a small old house. It was barely visible hidden behind a bunch of trees. The house appeared to be unkempt, and there was peeling paint and broken windows. The yard was also overgrown, and the whole place had an abandoned look. 
I was a bit skeptical of the house and not sure if anybody even lived there. I decided to go there anyways though. When I knocked on the door, there was no answer at first, so I knocked again and waited. The door was sitting open a few inches though, so I pushed it open and took a few careful steps inside to see if anybody was around. The inside was dark and smelled musty, and the only light coming in was from an old flickering lamp on a table. I was thinking that this was really weird, but I was desperate for some help and just hoped that somebody lived there. I heard a noise coming from the back of the house. It sounded like footsteps. I was nervous, but I called out, Hello? Is anybody there? My car broke down and I was just wondering if you could help me. There was no response. Whoever had been walking around had stopped, and I decided to leave due to the awkwardness of the situation and the fact that I was actually intruding a bit. I hadn't heard it happen, but somehow the door had shut behind me, so when I went to leave, I tried to pull the handle, but it was locked. I started to panic. I noticed a small window near the ceiling, but it was too high to reach. I looked around for something to break the door open, but I saw nothing useful near me, and I wasn't going to venture further into the darkness of the house. As I was trying to find another way out, I heard a voice from behind me. It was a low, raspy whisper that said, What are you doing here? I spun around, but there was nobody there. My heart was racing, and I felt like I was about to faint. I kept trying the door, hoping that it would open, but it remained locked. I couldn't figure out how to unlock it either. It was like it was locked from the other side. Suddenly, I heard the footsteps again, but they were right behind me. I turned around slowly, and this time, I saw a figure standing in the shadows. It was hard to make out any details, but it looked like a person. The figure moved closer, and I could see that it was a man. His face was obscured by a hood, though. I backed away, but he didn't seem to be in a hurry. He just stared at me, and the silence was deafening. I tried to reason with him again, saying, I'm sorry, I just needed help with my car. Once again, no response from the guy as he just stood there. I realized I had to do something before he came any closer. Grabbing a heavy vase from the small table, I threw it at the figure hoping to distract him. The vase shattered and the figure hesitated for a moment before moving towards me. In a burst of adrenaline, I managed to somehow force the door open. I bolted outside, running through the overgrown yard and not stopping until I reached the road. My car was still there, but it was getting darker, and I felt completely alone. I walked back to where the car had broken down, hoping to flag down any passing car. I sat in my car with the doors locked for almost three hours waiting for a car to drive by on the lonely rural highway. Thankfully, the man from the house didn't follow me out to my car. When I finally saw the headlights of another car coming down the road, I got out with the flashlight and flagged them down. The driver was a nice man who offered to drive me to the next town. He dropped me off with no incident and I finally had service there to call a tow truck and put an end to my horrible night that I was having. I realized the cabin looked sketchy and it wasn't the greatest idea to enter it uninvited, but I was panicking about my broken down car and trying to get help before darkness came. I hope that I never have to go through anything like that again. I recently remembered something pretty creepy that happened when I was 16. It was during the summertime, so I would be home from school every day. I lived with my parents, and we had these next door neighbors who had one kid. He was seven years old, and I didn't really know him that well because he wasn't in my age range. However, I would see him outside from time to time, and me and my family were friendly with his. So one day, during that summer, I guess the kid's parents both had to go somewhere. So they came over the day before and asked if I could babysit. They said they would be gone for probably almost six hours from the morning until sometime in the afternoon. Now, I had never babysat before, but they said they would give me 50 bucks, so that made it an easy decision and I said yes. The next day, my parents both left for their jobs and I headed next door. The kid's name was Jacob and before his parents left, they just gave me some basic instructions. Jacob was old enough that it wouldn't be too difficult to look after him. So after his parents left, Jacob and I started playing video games together. For a seven-year-old, he was actually really good. This continued for probably several hours. Then I remember it was interrupted by a knock on the front door. We paused the game and I got up to go and see who was there. Jacob followed me and when we made it near the entry of the house, I saw that there was a man outside. He was standing on the front step, 
and had longer hair, a bit of a beard, and was just wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants. I had no idea who he was, but after seeing him, I asked Jacob if he knew the guy. Jacob said that he didn't know who he was, but the man had come to their house several days prior. When I asked if they had answered the door for him, he said no. I was curious as to why this man was here. I told Jacob to go into the other room, and then I answered the door. When I opened it up, the man looked kind of surprised at first. Then, after saying hi, he asked if he could come inside the house. He didn't give me a reason why immediately. I said no, and then asked him why he wanted to come in. The man then said that he was there to do a free floor inspection. I told him no thanks, then I shut the door. The guy certainly came across as suspicious to me. I waited until he left the property, and also made sure that he didn't go over to my house next door. He walked to a car that was parked on the side of the road, and then got inside of it. When he did, I went back over to Jacob and continued playing video games with him. A short while later, maybe like 10 or 15 minutes, we paused the game to go and make some food. When we got to the kitchen, I noticed out the front window that the man had actually not left and driven away. He was still inside of his car, which was parked in the same spot. I went closer to the window, and Jacob followed and looked out as well. When we were looking out the window, Jacob then told me that he had seen the guy also sitting in his car and seemingly watching him several days earlier. Jacob said that he had been playing outside and noticed the man watching him from his car, so he went in. When he told me this, it made me even more suspicious about the man. We continued to watch the guy from the window. Soon though, the man seemed to notice us. He then drove off. We were glad that he was gone. I was really confused though as to what he was doing. For the rest of the time that I looked after Jacob that day, we did not notice the man return at all. Things went well and his parents got back. When they did, we told them about the guy. Then I went back over to my house. Personally, I never noticed the man in the neighborhood after that. I'm guessing and hoping that he never returned. That was very suspicious though. I am a 26 year old female. Earlier this year, I met up with one of my best friends, Courtney. It was a Friday night and we went to a local village. Next to the center of town, there were some restaurants and there was also a park with live music being played. We had made reservations to the restaurant, but got there about an hour early to walk around and enjoy the night. It was very nice weather that evening and lots of other people were out. Courtney and I walked over to the concert and there was a bit of a crowd standing nearby. We hung out there for a while until it was time for our dinner reservations. While we were over there, I took a picture of Courtney and I and posted it to my Snapchat story. We later went to a nearby restaurant and then walked around the plaza. After we left, we each went home. Now after arriving back to my apartment, I saw that I had a few Snapchat notifications. One of them in particular caught my eye. A guy who I did not know responded to my story. He responded to the picture of Courtney and I and said, I was behind you guys. I did not have any clue as to who this guy was and I did not even remember becoming friends with him on Snapchat. I realized that he must have recognized us though and also been at the concert thing. I responded with something like, oh, haha, that's funny. He then said something like, yes, I was watching you the whole time. I was a little bit creeped out by this response, but hoped and assumed that he was just joking. I did not respond. However, the man then sent another message a very short time later. I looked and he asked where I was going next weekend and said that he would watch us then too. I asked the man who he even was. I was wondering why and when I became friends with him on Snapchat. The man did not respond, but left me on red. After that, I blocked him. I then started talking to Courtney and telling her of the situation. Courtney said that the guy had also sent her some Snapchats that same night. She also mentioned how he was being creepy, and she too did not know who he was. After that, she blocked him as well. I remember that for a few days and the next time I saw Courtney, I was a little bit paranoid. Luckily, nothing strange has happened since, except I never saw what the guy looked like and I still don't know. I'm not sure if he was actually at the concert thing and watching us, or if he was just saying that on Snapchat. I honestly don't know why. I'm just hoping that I never encounter him again. 
I live by myself in a two-story house. It's not that big, but enough space for me, and I've lived here for about five years now. Something really crazy happened last year. I worked pretty late one night. After getting home, I went inside of my house and was planning to pretty much go straight to bed. So I went down the hallway, took a shower, and then went into my bedroom. It was right after I got into my bedroom that I thought I heard the sound of a door opening downstairs. Obviously, I was home alone, so I didn't know what that would be. I didn't hear it that clearly, so I stopped what I was doing and listened. I thought that I heard footsteps then. I couldn't exactly tell where they were coming from or where they were going. I also didn't know which door inside of my house I had heard opening. It was not the front door, it just sounded like it was downstairs someplace. So as I stood there just inside of my bedroom listening, the noises quieted down. I no longer heard footsteps of somebody walking or anything. I was still pretty freaked out about it though. After about a minute or two, I still hadn't heard anything and I got up the courage to investigate. Most of my lights inside were off, so I left my bedroom and headed downstairs. I started turning on just about every light and going in one room at a time. I was really nervous and didn't know what to expect, but each room that I entered, I didn't see anybody there. Eventually, I made it around all the rooms on the main level of my house. I was very confused, but also relieved that I didn't see anyone. I thought that maybe I had just been hearing things or imagining. Still. The noises seemed pretty real when I had heard them. So then I went around and turned all the lights back out. I was going to finally go back to bed when I got to the staircase and was about to go up. I heard another noise. It was the sound of a door opening again, except this time I could tell that it was the door leading to the basement. I hadn't checked the basement at all when looking through my house. I realized that somebody must have been down there. From where I was, I could not see the door to the basement. I quickly started going upstairs to get to my bedroom. As I was doing this, I heard footsteps moving around on the main level, heading in my direction. I got to the top of the stairs and then went to my bedroom. As I was going inside there, I heard whoever was inside of my house starting to go up the stairs. Now I was extremely nervous. I locked my bedroom door behind me and quickly went for my cell phone. Then I dialed 911. As I was doing this, the footsteps started to reach the top of the stairs. I told the 911 dispatcher that there was an intruder in my home, and I gave them the address. Meanwhile, the footsteps got closer and closer to my room. Then the person tried entering. The door did not open because it was locked. After trying the door, the person seemed to go across the hallway to another room. I stayed inside of my bedroom and feared that the person might try to get into my room again. However. I heard the footsteps moving back down the hallway less than a minute later. Then I heard them going back downstairs. Whoever was there seemed to go back down. After that, I really didn't hear anything. When the police got there, I finally left my bedroom. They came inside and searched my entire house, including the basement, but they didn't find anyone. They also searched outside, but came up empty there as well. However, they did notice that my back door was unlocked. Whoever had been there had left. I never saw what they looked like, but I had forgotten to lock the back door to my house and that's likely how they got in. They must have been hiding in my basement. It just really creeps me out knowing that they tried entering my bedroom, knowing that I was in there. The person never came back though. For some background to the story, I'm a female and was 17 at the time. I was a senior in high school and lived with my parents. I have Snapchat and have had it since middle school actually. It was a very common way for me to talk to friends in high school. Occasionally I would get added by random people who I didn't know. I would say it happened about every once every week or two. However, I never added anybody back unless I knew exactly who they were. I added some random people back when I was much younger and some of them were kind of weird so I stopped doing that. Well, I remember one day, I got added by some random guy on Snapchat. I did not add him back and deleted it. So I think it was the next day or else a couple days later, I got added by one of my friends from school. It was not one of my best friends, but somebody who I knew decently. I already was friends with her on Snapchat, so when I saw it, I figured that she made a new account. In high school, 
It was not that uncommon for people to make new accounts for various reasons. I didn't think too much of it, and I added her back. That afternoon, after I arrived home from school, I was just in my bedroom at my desk, and that same friend messaged me on Snapchat. She asked me what I was doing, and I said that I was just at home doing homework. She then told me that she was going to come over. I said okay, but it seemed a little bit odd. She had maybe come over like once or twice, but it had been a really long time. I also hadn't really hung out with her in a while. During this time, my parents were still gone at work, and I was at home by myself. About 15 minutes later, there was a knock at the front door. I assumed it to be my friend, and I was still a little bit confused that she was coming over at all. But she also did not text me on Snapchat to say that she was there or anything. So I left my bedroom, and I walked out into the living room. I soon saw that there was a random man standing on the front step. I had no idea who he was or what he was doing at my house. I decided not to answer the door. Luckily, he did not see me when I looked out of the window. I then went back to my bedroom. When I did, I saw that my friend had now messaged me on Snapchat. She told me that she was outside and asked to be let in. Now I knew what was going on. This was not my friend at all, but this man must have been pretending to be her. I instantly blocked the account. I then went back out into the living room and saw that the man was still standing there. I wasn't sure what I was going to do about it, but that's when I noticed my dad's car going down the street. He was coming back home from work. As soon as he started to pull into the driveway, the man at the front step just took off running. He left the front yard going back out into the street. My dad came inside and mentioned how he saw a guy running from our yard. I told him what happened and he called the cops. We talked to them when they came out and they said that they would look into it. That man must have known my friend's name if he pretended to be her. How he even knew who I was, I do not know. My best guess is that he saw me on Facebook or Instagram or something, or maybe even in person. He must have looked at my friends list on probably Facebook to get her name and then impersonate her on Snapchat. It was crazy, but luckily I never heard from him or saw him again. This happened last year and still creeps me out when I think of it. So I was at home one night by myself. I was just in my bedroom scrolling through my phone. All of a sudden, I saw this Snapchat notification from a name that I did not recognize. I was curious, so I went to Snapchat and opened the snap to see. It was a selfie of what appeared to be a man. However, this photo was taken extremely close to his face and he also appeared to be in a very dark room. I could barely see his face at all and didn't recognize it to be anybody that I knew. The picture honestly looked very creepy. There was no words with the picture and that was it. I guess at some point, I must have become friends with this guy. I didn't know when though. I had Snapchat for probably 10 years. I did not send a picture back, but instead typed a message for the guy asking who he was. Then he sent another photo. When I opened it, I saw that it was much like the one before. It was honestly so creepy. I wish I would have screenshotted it, but I didn't. I thought that maybe the person sent a picture like this by mistake, but after the second one, I realized that it was not. I asked again who it was. The person's response, though, really shocked me. He simply said, I'm coming over now. I thought that he had to be joking, but I also realized then that I had my location on on Snapchat. I quickly went into the settings and turned my location off. If this guy was serious, I was hoping that he would not know where I was. Then I blocked the mysterious guy. I thought that was it. I returned to what I was doing, but I couldn't help but feel a little bit creeped out by the whole thing. Well, roughly 30 minutes later, there was a knock at the front door. I had a terrible feeling instantly. I think by now it was like 10 something at night. Not a normal time for somebody to come to the door. I carefully left my bedroom and went down the hallway. Eventually, I got to a window that I could look out and see who was there. When I did, I saw a man wearing a ski mask standing there. I couldn't believe it. The guy must have got my location before I had turned it off. I watched him knock on the door again. Then he started to look around. When he did, 
I quickly moved back and away from the window. I heard the guy walk off the step, but did not know where he was going to. The next thing I knew, I heard him right outside one of the main windows. I ran back into my bedroom and then called the police. I locked my bedroom door and covered my window. Then I just waited. I did not hear anything during this time. I wasn't sure what was going on, if he was trying to break in or maybe if he left. About 10 minutes later is when the cops arrived. They came to the front door and I told them about what happened. They offered to look around and I almost said that they didn't have to but I ended up saying sure. Then they looked around my backyard and surprisingly found the man hiding in some bushes. When they located him, they asked him to come out. He ignored them and then tried to run. However, the police caught up with him before he left the yard. It was the same guy who had been Snapchatting me. I'm not sure what his plans were. I'm just glad that he was caught. This took place back when I was a kid. I believe that I was 10 years old or so. This was in the late 90s, and during this time, I would ride the bus home from school. It would drop me off at the corner, not far from my house. Then I would walk a short distance on the sidewalk and go inside. We lived in a pretty standard neighborhood in the suburbs, and when I would arrive back home from school, both of my parents would still be gone at work. I had been trusted to be home by myself since I was nine years old and I didn't mind it. But in the afternoons, I would usually only be by myself for about two or three hours. I would just hang around the house and do homework or watch TV usually. So one time I got home from school like always. I was by myself and it was maybe about 15 minutes or so after I got back home. I was in the living room and there was a knock at the front door. I looked over and from where I was, I could tell that somebody was there, but I couldn't see who they were. Back then, I was a shy kid, and I didn't want the person at the door to see me, so I ducked down. The person at the door then knocked again. I was curious, so I carefully moved to a window and looked out to see who it was. There was a man there, but I did not recognize him, and he was just standing at the front step. After knocking twice, the guy then tried opening the door, which was locked. Then, he finally walked away. I thought that this was really weird. I watched him cut through the front yard and then go out of sight, heading towards the sidewalk. It was very confusing why this guy would be here. I was thinking that he had to be at the wrong house or something. I really couldn't think of any other possible explanation. But after the guy left, I moved on and forgot about it. It was certainly strange and a bit creepy, but it didn't seem that bad to me. My parents ended up getting home later, and everything was fine. But the very next day, I saw the man again. I remember that I rode the bus home, and I got dropped off. Shortly after I stepped off the bus, I remember noticing the guy. He was a long ways away, but walking down the sidewalk. I found it strange to see him here again, because until the previous day, I had never seen him before. I was not aware of him living in the area or anything like that. So I tried to hurry up, and I walked quickly to my house. Then I unlocked the door and went inside. Once I was in, I felt safe, and I didn't really think that the man would do anything. But maybe five minutes later, there was a knock at the door again. I looked and saw that the same guy was back. Obviously, I was not going to answer the door. I tried to stay hidden from the view of the man. This time, he only knocked once, and again he tried opening the door. But after that, I saw him start to walk away. It was pretty much the same thing as the day before, and I saw him go out of my sight. This time, though, I was more creeped out because of the fact that he was here two days in a row. Plus, he saw me walk to the house, so there was no mistaking it. But for the next hour or so, nothing else strange happened. I was just hanging out in the living room. Then, I decided to go out and water some of the flowers in the backyard. I went to the back of the house where the kitchen was, and then left at the back door. I took two steps into the backyard and saw the guy coming out from behind a bush. He was walking towards me. I ran back inside as fast as I could, and the man started running after me. I closed the door and locked it just in the nick of time. He nearly stopped me. He tried getting in, but couldn't. I ran out of the room and went to the phone in the living room. 
I dialed 911 and asked for police to come to my address. The man ran away at that point though. I was glad he was gone. The police got there a while later and searched the entire property as well as the neighborhood. However, the man was long gone by then. There was a bit of an investigation done. I don't really remember much else other than a neighbor about a block away remembered seeing a work van parked on the side of the road. They didn't know whose it was, and it was thought that maybe that was the guy's vehicle. After that, though, he never came back. I'm really glad that I was all right. I will never forget that. I'm a 29-year-old female, and I live with my husband in a house. Our neighborhood is pretty standard for the most part, and this happened about a year and a half ago. I worked pretty normal hours then, but my husband's hours are more random. On this night, I recall that he was working late. It was probably sometime after 8 p.m., and I remember that I was in the living room. I was FaceTiming my sister and young nephew. The three of us were talking until her son had to go to bed, and then I hung up. At that point, I recall looking out the front window and noticing a car starting to pull into our driveway. A couple of things struck me as odd about this, though. For one, it was not my husband's vehicle, and he wasn't supposed to be home yet. And for two, the vehicle's lights were off as it entered the driveway. Now our driveway is somewhat long and goes up to the garage. The garage is out of sight of the house though because it connects to it. So the car ended up slowing down and then just barely going out of my sight and parking. I kept watching and was now listening as well, but I didn't hear anybody getting out or anything. I called my husband and let him know what was going on. I was hoping that maybe this was one of his friends or something, but he had no clue as to who that would be and said that he would leave work as soon as possible. After hanging up with him, I wasn't really sure what to do. I then walked over to the dining room, which had a window that looked out to the backyard. It was very dark back there as well, but when I looked, I saw what appeared to be a man walking out from behind the garage and into the backyard. When I saw this, I left the room and dialed 911. I told the operator my address and told them the situation of what was going on. I was told that police were on the way. After that, I was walking through the living room when I suddenly heard the sound of glass breaking. It sounded like the dining room window was being smashed. I ran the rest of the way to the bedroom and then closed the door behind me and locked it. I moved into the bedroom closet and shut the door there as well. Now that I was there, I really couldn't hear too much. Several minutes went by, and I thought that I was in the clear, but then I heard footsteps in the hallway. When that happened, I held my breath. The man got closer and closer, and didn't go into any other rooms. It seemed as though he was heading straight for the bedroom that I was in. He then tried opening the door, which was locked. When it didn't open, there was a very loud bang at the door. Perhaps the man was trying to break the door down by hitting it with something. Then, after another loud bang, I heard police sirens in the distance. This caused the man to move away from the door and go back down the hallway. Within a minute, police were out front of the house. I didn't hear much more until I was sure that the cops were there. Then I left the bedroom and went out into the hallway. The police had found the man leaving through the backyard and luckily he was caught. The man had in fact broken the glass to the dining room, but nothing in the house was really messed up other than the window. I'm not sure what the guy's plan was, but I'm really grateful that the police got there when they did.